everybody. I just want to give a shout out to the South slash the Midwest where Christian and I were. Oh, man. Showing us love. <laughs> Who knew? Who Look. knew we were beloved in the southern states <laughs> slash wherever you think Kentucky is? Exactly. It's uh, you below the Mason Dixon. The Cooligans are welcomed and appreciated. All right, we need to change the marketing okay? around where we're welcomed. Because <laughs> maybe using the Mason Dixon line as the definitive <laughs> point doesn't really lean into our usual stances. <laughs> Okay. All right. We 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 you know whatever Jim Crow laws were in effect, we're nah. people are fans of us, bro. <laughs> nah, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> is that hold is on. that not good? Okay. We're all, we're just brainstorming right now. Yeah. No. <laughs> we strike that down, my guy. No. We're brainstorming. No. Okay. We're changing everything out here Christian, below the Mason Did you know Louisville? Dixon. Did you know Louisville has the second highest Cuban population in the country? You know, I, I learned that from watching your Instagram feed, Alexis, because you were you were so sh you were, um, you know, like the, the 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 shock of like finding so many Cubans in a location that was not Cuba was quite surprising to you. Bro, you were very <laughs> you were very happy. I, it felt like I was getting punked. The Uber driver from the airport, <laughs> Guano. I went to the wrong airport. I went sorry, we went to the wrong hotel. The lady who checked me into that hotel couldn't find my name. Cuban lady. Got back in an Uber, mm. Cuban guy. Got to the new hotel, person who checked me in, Cuban lady. What the hell's going on? I was like, all right, all right, all right. Where's <laughs> Ashton Kutcher? You know what I mean? <laughs> this is clearly punk. I'm getting punked here. Uh, well, apparently Ashton Kutcher is at a ditty party. Well, we, yeah, everybody's <laughs> yeah. trying to <laughs> disassociate themselves. Just like very LeBron quickly, said, right and what they made you say every morning when you when you uh, put your hand over your heart. And, and uh, saluted the national Diddy uh, Pip photo at the Sean John Studios. <laughs> Ain't no party like a Diddy yes. party. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, look. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cooligans. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. It's the Cooligans, buddy. Hey. That's right. Alexis on. Uh, he Alexis is in the studio. I am not. I am. Uh, <laughs> so you're gonna have a lot of that today okay alexis is hitting all the buttons he's in the studio i just got back from nashville from the uh emceeing the premier league fan fest alexis just got back from from louisville at um uh for, for a usl championship match between indy 11 and uh and louisville uh That's and right, louisville city time. right <laughs> okay, Alexis apparently uh, reversed his puberty uh, as he got over there. Yeah, okay, I don't know why. It's a really fun time. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what hanging out with too many Cubans does to you, but it's apparently that. Okay, <laughs> so, um, so, so uh, we, we're gonna talk all about it. We have to get uh, go over what the you know. I'll I'll talk about my experience at, in Nashville for the Premier League Fan Fest uh, uh, with all the NBC folks. We will talk about um, uh, all the Premier League news because there was a lot. The big shakeup again. The Gunners are back on top. Uh, you know and this what? time it's not coming up Arsenal, and I like it. <laughs> okay, the the Everton got got again. The Premier Damn. League they don't want to see us win, bro. How'd you take okay. an L? How'd you take an L on a Monday morning, dog? <laughs> how you how you how you win? With three points and also lose, bro. This is Everton bro. are the only club that can do it, okay? Um, How they turn a win and, into a draw, dog? <laughs> <laughs> it is brutal. Um, so, and uh, we'll also talk some She Believes Cup and uh, and do a, a quick MLS recap. But let's get right into it. I mean, I'll start because uh, I just I just flew in from Nashville and uh, boy, my co cowboy hats are tired, okay? Uh, because. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm trying my best out here, bro. I'm exhausted. Okay, I, if we, we've spoken about this before, but the Premier League Fan Fest, the call time is uh, 4 a.m. and we got to. Uh, I'm be now on prepared set. for that, even though I could not partake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm now very Correct. prepared for that. I'd be like, oh, why are we getting up so early, it's so late, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, a lot of people were asking me, like, there's like, where's your other half? And I'm like, my wife is right here. What are you talking about? Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the better so half, the, not the other half. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot of people, you were very missed. A lot of people were asking uh, about you. Uh, Same for you, uh, by you the know, way. I, oh, Louisville's like, yo, uh, 
when when are cooligans coming out? Oh, you do stuff with CBS. We need you on cooligans so you can curse. <laughs> That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, look, those Cubans demand authenticity, Alexis. Yes. All right. <laughs> um, so the the, the fan fest uh, was great. If you were watching on um, NBC or Peacock, uh, the, it, I, I had a blast. I mean, you saw it looked amazing. The, the, the one it surpri- also looked star studded. Yes, there were, uh, you know, I got to meet Daniel Sturridge. I got to meet um, uh, Ryan Babel. Remember we were talking about Ryan Babel? Yeah, of um, course. Miguelito, remember? <laughs> we were talking about there's, a, there's a new show that's uh, airing on Peacock. It's a dating show mm-hmm. of former former footballers. I forgot the name of the show. Um, maybe uh, it's uh, like a, let us know. It's like, a, it's like a bachelor, but they're all former footballers. Right, and they have to find love, but without um, telling people that they were former players. So you know, they, so so the the women don't know that they're like wealthy and successful footballers. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So uh, he was there talking about it, and uh, it was it was just funny seeing um, Rebecca Lowe talk to Ryan Babel about this because it was it was like one of those things where like where where the the, the sport meets like uh, you know sort of trashy reality shows that people love and rebecca lowe was like this is the show for me i love yeah. <laughs> i love this concept so um uh, and seamus was there remember uh Re- you know wrestlemania was just uh uh was last night or saturday i forgot what yeah seamus was there and i knew i remember seamus um lives in nashville i remember remember when we were in philly and he he showed up mm-hmm. and and like p- picked up robbie musto so I was thinking when the the fan fest was scheduled, and I and I saw the guest list, so I knew who was going to be there, and I and I was like, Seamus is not. Why is Seamus not on the list? He lives in Nashville. It would make sense for him to be there. And then they, they actually did a great the, the the production crew hit it perfectly from uh from from the whole team because nobody knew Seamus was going to show up. They were doing an interview with another wrestler uh, from WWE, and as they're interviewing him, and they were talking like he he was talking trash about Seamus. And because uh, about being a Liverpool supporter or whatever. And then Seamus, boom, shows up out of nowhere. It was just like the way Undertaker randomly shows up in a, in a, in a fight. Um, Seamus shows up, starts, he, he, he brings a Liverpool shirt because, because Robbie Musto was uh, kind of talking trash about Liverpool, thinking that, you know, that they wouldn't win the title and blah, blah, blah. And, and it, kind of explaining his doubts about it. And Seamus came, you know, remember he picked him up in Philly. This time around, he brought a Liverpool shirt with the name Musto on the back and took Robbie Musto's jacket off and put the jersey on him and forced him to turn around and celebrate (laughs) with with this Liverpool shirt. I also saw (laughs) Robbie Musto on his shoulders. Yes, he did. Simba (laughs) and Mufasa over here. (laughs) Yo, Seamus, I was five feet away from that. Seamus picked up Robbie Musso like nothing, bro, and put him on his shoulders like he's he basically he said he said Robbie, you want to go uppies? You want to go uppies? And put him right on his Robbie shoulder. Robbie Musso was like this. I want to go up. I want to go up. <laughs> it was so funny. And then, uh, and but the you remember you know the, the this primary, is I wish the fan you turned the cameras on after the show because that's how you pick me up. People don't see this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so somebody, I forgot who tweeted it, but somebody, uh, somebody, I think it was somebody in Gully Squad uh, uh, tweeted, like, now nah, Seamus needs to pick up Alexis like that, which I would pay to see, okay? Yeah. I, that should be the main event at WrestleMania. You know dog. who else is going to pay be... after that? Insurance, because my guy's career <laughs> okay. is over. We need to make it an Olympic event at Paris 2024, mm-hmm. dog. Let's go. Just, the Alexa, I'm just the, sitting there eating the Guerrero slice slip. and someone has to lift my chair. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Guerrero slip. Can, how long can, can you hold him up? Just um, like uh, Kazakhstan and, but, wins. <laughs> <Go hold. laughs> Some old strong man from Armenia. <laughs> You remember? You remember the, the the fan fest stage? There's like a gap. There's like a, a, a yeah. like a five six foot gap, and so um, I, I have the video. I'm gonna send it to to, to Mike so we can add it in post. But the uh, Robbie is brutally terrified. He's just like, bro, I'm gonna fall into this cavern that is like, and the stage is like another like six feet high. Yeah, yeah. There's He's like a like moat. Terrified, but instead of water, it's yeah, just yeah. concrete. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, the moat is made to keep away crazy Manchester United fans. You know what no, I mean? No, no. Like that's what the it's riff for. Raff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, and and Robbie was so terrified, and and no one knew that Sheamus was going to show up. So it's just wild because they they're starting the segment, they're talking to this WWE guy, and then uh, and then boom, all of a sudden Sheamus is you up uh, twelve feet off the ground. Uh, so it was pretty incredible. So. The whole fan fest was great. I just want to give a shout out to everybody that uh, came up to me. Uh, you know, I always I always feel like a fraud signing autographs. But so many people came up to me ask, asking me for an autograph, asking for a photo. Also, got a bunch of people, a couple um, uh, uh, Metal Lark fans, just me- the Metal Lark family. There were a lot of uh, uh, folks that were like, "Yo, uh, shout out to Levitar." You know, it's just like we, you know, the, the overlap between soccer fans and Levitar fans is not there's not too many. But they showed up. To but the, the ones were there are loud, their... and that's what I like. There was one dude, and I, I'm, I apologize, I can't remember his name right now. Um, but he was he was in the in, in the crowd holding a Indiana Pacers scarf. So meaning, so I see Liverpool, I see Memphis Memphis Gooners, I see every yeah. I see every club scarf. My guy Spurs, got this, Pacers everything. FC. <laughs> <laughs> and I just see one Indiana Pacers scarf, and I'm like. Bro, and I and I shouted him out from the stage. I'm like, bro, you win weirdest scarf at the fan fest. Why is that dude here? And then he messaged me. and He was like, yo, I'm a big uh, Levitar fan, and I just want to make I want to let everybody know, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, you know, I think he came from Indiana, possibly. Really? Um, but that yeah, that's what there were a lot of people that, that there were so came, many people you know, drove. There was 14 hours. I went to the fan. I went to the tailgate before the Louisville City match, and there's a couple groups. There's the Coopers. There's the Louisville City. The Lou City Purple People Eaters. Uh, glad I could say that a whole time. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, the, everyone's really cool. They got great food, tents. They've got kegs everywhere. When I tell you, and I'm not making this up, I honestly believe the number's around 4% of buildings in Louisville that don't have uh, tons of bourbon in it. Yo, I went to a bakery <laughs> that sells breakfast sandwiches. They're done at noon, dude. They're done at noon. They have three bookshelves full of bourbon options. So you could buy bottles. I mean, there's bourbon wow. everywhere. And, but, and it's all great. There's just like great bourbon everywhere. It's crazy. So, of course, at the tailgate, oh, there is a bourbon everywhere. But there's one bottle with a handmade logo. It's a really badly drawn dinosaur. It's a bunch of words and numbers. Uh, and then all I can really see is it says, like, it's, I think it's called, like, the Juicy Dragon, which, you know, I have in my search history. Um, <laughs> so... They're, they're having me try. One guy makes his own honey wine, and I'm like, "Well, you're the weirdo. Make bourbon." And he's like, "The other guy makes bourbon." So as I'm over there, some guy comes up to me. He's like, "I'm a quantum physicist," and I'm like, "Cool. <laughs> you and I are not going to have a lot in common. <laughs> Our conversation will not have a lot of overlap." Uh, and he was like, "I make. I'm just a regular yeah, physicist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really do mess with the yeah. quantum. So we don't really. <laughs> I, you know, I thought quantum. Why stay in school for another year? <laughs> I'll just do physicist." Uh, <laughs> so he told me he makes his own bourbon. I wish I remembered homie's name. He told me he makes his own bourbon. I said, are you out of your mind? And then he lifts that bottle that has the hand printed logo on it. I put it in my Instagram. Uh, it's 137.9 proof. So I said, why 137.9? He said, well, if it's 138, it's illegal to ship through the air. And I said, great. Well, enjoy your day. And he goes, no, no, no. I want you to try it. And I said, I said, enjoy your day, sir. (laughs) He goes, also, I've been watching you. That's what I use. That's what I use to remove paint, actually. (laughs) There's just just a bunch of brushes floating in it. Uh, He explains that uh, I've been drinking bourbon rum because he's seen me drink bourbon already at this tailgate. And I said, well, I, it's a simple rule I have. We just put a little in your mouth, and then you swallow it, right? Like, that's how you drink bourbon, just like every other alcohol? He says, no, you have to swish it around first so that it's absorbed mm. by every part of your mouth, and then you swallow it. And I said, okay, let's give it a try. So we tried it with his. Now, the immediate sensation I felt upon swishing it was wherever it touched immediately became numb. And I mean, have <laughs> you know the parts of the inside just- of your lips that touch... Your teeth? Have you yeah, ever yeah. felt that? You've never felt that before. Meaning like not being no, able like, to feel my own teeth? Have you ever teeth? felt anything? Have you ever recognized that that's there? No. You go through life 
just knowing it's there, right, right. right? Unless you have like yeah, yeah. eating popcorn or something and you got to get like an almond piece or something. Exactly. Other than that, you never think about it. Well, let me tell you when you do think about it, when it goes completely numb, dude, <laughs> when you're not sure you're able to keep liquids in your mouth and you've, you've lost control of your mouth, that's when you notice. I was freaking yeah, out, dude. Freaking it's out. like it's like when you when you prep for oral surgery, you know what I mean? Like you start yeah, drooling because yeah. you're <laughs> nobody. You got like I think I'm part of drive, and they're like, "Yeah, sir, sure. get out there, buddy. Operate heavy machinery." I I never in my life have felt that. And I said to him, "I go, I think I'm drinking it wrong. I can't feel my mouth." He goes, "No, you're drinking it right." I go, "I don't want to hang out with you anymore, dude." <laughs> oh my god. Uh, inc- incredible. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, it was dope. I mean, uh, you know, we've. We haven't really done much USL stuff. Uh, we've been to USL games. We I don't should. Even think I've been to USL. We should, match. by the way. Yeah, yeah. The atmosphere was dope. Look, it's a small stadium. It's fourteen thousand, but it looks. It almost looks similar to like if you took where uh, Toronto plays BMO Field and you took LAFC, the other BMO, uh, and you put it together. It kind of has that vibe to it. Like the ceiling yeah. kind of gives me a little bit of an LAFC vibe, but it's very small. But it's it's intimate. It's really modern. It's so dope. That's it. To me, it's like exactly what a stadium in that in that in the second division should look like. It was like yeah, it, and it and it was it was uh the game was um the the Louisville indie game was on big CBS. Yeah, so that was great to see. Yeah, Jack Harlow um, was there. I saw a lot he of people. He didn't want to talk to me, but he was there. Ah, uh. I gave I gave him a head nod. <laughs> okay. I was like, what's up, Jack? Yeah, you know, he was like, what's up? Okay. It's because you you weren't you didn't invite him on a chicken shop date, bro. Mm. That's a, he'll he'll go to that. Oh, Amelia would have been <laughs> with, so with the, fucking Amelia. jealous, dude. <laughs> okay, Hayden. Bro, I would have okay. secured uh, a second date. But no, hundred percent. That was <laughs> that was uh, that was dope to see. So we we both had uh, just an incredible experience out uh, out in the south. How were the so Arsenal fans to, when uh, uh, when they won on Sunday? The, oh yeah, so um, the the games themselves and the fans, the Arsenal fans were, um, I mean, excited. I mean, what they won three nil, right? Uh, but what they, about how about the Arsenal uh, fans when Liverpool and United drew? That was a win. That the, was a W. That was it, that was um, they, the 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 runner um, Sir Mo Farah. He was uh, he yeah, was yeah, there, yeah. Um, and he's like a, for Great Britain. He, he had won. I think, he would four wear Olympic a United goals. jersey for a month if they won, right? If they won, <laughs> and um, so he was, he was like hyping up uh, the Arsenal fans that were there because he was basically like, um, uh, he was like, please United, you know, like he was rooting for United, uh, but he was just kind of expressing how big of an Arsenal fan uh, uh, he was. The Arsenal fans were uh, were great. I would, I would probably say because that that win felt a little bit more uh, uh, expected, so the game itself was just like the the uh, I would say especially based on the the all the analysis because we were even talking in the green room uh just about like who is going to win this title and the 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 main things that especially the two robbies were saying and uh and tim howard were just how comfortable arsenal look in games like they control games they they don't lose control uh this last like three month stretch they have not lost control of games and that is uh that's why they were sort of favoring them i I think they the the conversations felt like it was liverpool or arsenal that and and that city might slip up basically because they won they've won it before and then also uh, and because of uh uh, really chasing champions league but the yeah the the the, I, i would say out of all the games at the fan fest, the most intense was Manchester United Liverpool, where there was a quietness to it that you know. I mean, and there were you know thousands of United fans and uh, and thousands of Liverpool fans, and it felt just like kind of a pin drop and in certain moments. But the the obviously the 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 Kabi Menu uh, goal was. I mean, United yeah, fans lost. Got nuts. lost Lost Arsenal their minds. fans are hugging. Uh, United fans are hugging. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just just such a huge moment, and um, yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the I mean, we can let's let's get into it because the 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 Aaron Wan Basaka. I mean, now not only do a lot of people, a lot of United fans, uh, can't make any sense of why he why he put in the tackle. We'll get into why should it have been a penalty. But why did Aaron Wan-Bissaka 
do that when we had a uh, parlay in DraftKings that said that Manchester United Liverpool would be under three and a half goals. And we the parlay was uh, United, uh, uh, Everton winning, which it already – we, I, the, I, I put that one in there, and I'm like, let's go, okay? That's how confident I was. I wasn't was. here on Thursday, and then, so I didn't get to be a part of the conversation. Yeah, then, so when I saw it come through, I said, just, okay, no one curtailed Christian is what happened. <laughs> but the confidence was there, because it mainly not because of everything was playing. It was because we were playing Burnley, and I'm like, we can't lose to Burnley, <laughs> and we almost lost to mm-hmm. Burnley, bro. Uh, we got the, the I don't know if you saw the goal, Dominic Calvert Lewin. Um, it was similar to the, the Darwin Nunez goal uh, from uh, uh, like the week prior, two weeks prior, where he just got in front of the goalkeeper and, and ended up going in. So, um, so Everton win. What was the Mike? What was the other um, the, the the Bundesliga one? It was a Bayer Lever uh, by Leverkusen month. Bayer Leverkusen money line, so so Everton win, Bayer Leverkusen win, and then just all we got to just keep it to three goals or less for Manchester United Liverpool. And in the eighty second minute, Aaron Wan Bissak was like, "Nah, bro, I just what if, <laughs> I, what if, I apologize. What if I fuck this all up real quick." <laughs> <laughs> because the you know uh, who is it Harvey Elliott that he fouled mm-hmm. and and you know he he put in a challenge inside the box of just one of those bro do you need is it necessary to do that challenge specifically to throw the, your leg there and Harvey Elliott great on him he put he puts the ball just in a spot where uh, the defender can't reach it but uh, as soon as Wambasaka throws his leg to the ground. Harvey Elliott is like, let's go. I'm a, I don't know if I'm, I know the Olympics this is here. The diving committee is, I'm sure they're watching. Maybe they want. He quickly Googled on his phone uh, how to dislocate, dislocate your own shoulder just to really <laughs> amp it up. I mean, he played it off. But I mean, props to, props to United. Props for, to him. Have you ever seen a team, well, yeah, you're an Everton fan. I was going to say, have you ever seen a team, a team play so bad and still find a way to draw? <laughs> <laughs> that, it, it was. It, it felt like the game wasn't at Old Trafford, right? No. It, it just like the, the amount of pressure that Liverpool was putting. It also felt like uh, United on, were on, on edibles at some point. Like I, I'm like, yo, constant miss passes. Even Maynu until he scores that goal. You know, he had an okay game. I mean, also clearly they're like, all right, maybe we should focus on this kid because he's really good. They're like doubling <laughs> him up, trying to get him off his game. So I, to me, that's you should be impressive. When that goal went in, I was like. Um, just to give you any, a little bit of context about what my day looked like while you were hanging out in Nashville, I was at that moment at a Chili's 2 in the Louisville airport, international airport. A Chili's 2? Is that what? Is that like MLS Next yeah, Pro? Yeah. What's that? What's yeah, that yeah. About? Well, I can tell you this one. The chef was definitely semi, semi-pro because one of the worst chicken sandwiches I've ever said. I said, is it all this shit microwave, like Costco food? How is this not? How are you messing this up? But... I needed to do something. I had to sit at the bar. I needed to watch it. The Wi-Fi wasn't working too well. So the only thing in front of my gate was a Chili's 2, and they had a TV on at the bar. So I said, screw it. Uh, and I, okay, First, I don't – what is what is a Chili's 2? I've never even heard of – I don't know either. I know Chili's 1. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah Chili's <laughs> – I don't know why they did a, a sequel. I got to be honest. The first one, no one asked for – Chili's 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, no one what asked is this one about? At all. Um, what I will tell you is – I think it's simply just a, a smaller, less like there's no like a, waiters. More of a Chili's, a Chili's Express. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's all right. It's like uh, you know, like the <laughs> Pizza Huts where like the the mini like they have in colleges where like the mini pizzas are already waiting for you. It's similar, right? right but imagine right. more laxatives in the food, and that is <laughs> that's a Chili's too. You. I, I've always said this. You are much braver than I when it comes to like eating like either airport food or just like in, when when I'm in a, when I'm traveling, I I look out for my digestive tract more than any other part of my Not body. Me, baby. Okay, I'm making sure. I say, you know what? I don't know these people. I don't care if I take a massive dump in the bathroom near them. You don't know me, dog. <laughs> and also, I'm flying first class. I'm anonymous, bro. I'm flying first class. I'm basically like- the pilot. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not like you're going to see me on TV every morning on a large platform. And even if you do, and okay. I constantly get a bunch of X posts that say, hey, this guy took a huge dump at the Louisville International Airport. I'd be like, yeah, I'll retweet that. <laughs> I don't okay. care. You're, uh, Alexis will, have, will be the first person where the, 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 the airline... Uh, complains about him on Twitter. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, At Delta, please give this guy his own plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn. Uh, you know, just Delta's trying to uh, round jump support. Yeah. Uh, Boeing to, is like, that's to, the to, real to problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, forget door plugs. We need toilet yeah, plugs. Yeah. Like Maybe he dog. was sitting in that seat, which is why the wall blew apart. I also, okay. I just don't care. Okay. They usually have soft toilet paper at the airports, so I really don't care. Okay. Um, but there's not even a lounge. Anyway. There's not even a lounge in this airport. Uh, so I had to watch it amongst mm. the gen pop, you know. Uh, and my Damn. favorite part was when the main go went in. I'm focused on the game. I'm not focusing on the people around me. I didn't realize there was someone behind me. And he just goes, damn. And as I turn around, <laughs> it's a guy with a kid on his shoulders. And he's just like, sorry. And he walks away. I was like, all right, this is the vibe. Then I look at your social media, and there's 15,000 people <laughs> watching the game with you. I'm like, what a different experience I'm having. Very much so, yeah. Uh, look, the yeah, it was a a uh, look. It was a good game. I mean, I, and and it was a, it was a sloppier game than I expected entirely. I did not think Liverpool would would look that rattled. The mistake from uh, who was the 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 center back, um, the, the new, new kid, young kid. Kwanzaa. Uh, okay, okay. Was he? No, no, come Kam- oh, yeah. for United. For oh no sorry 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 for for Liverpool for Kwanzaa. Liverpool yeah you're right it, it is uh, Kwanzaa yeah J- Jarrell Kwanzaa the, uh, English center back 21 years old Bro, um, uh, apparently he came from Sochaux because I know Charlie said yo he's from Sochaux so I'm assuming he came from Sochaux which is the team Charlie played for in uh, in Ligue 1 but uh, he uh, what's oh, call okay it? as soon as he makes the pass if you watch that replay he immediately knows he messed up and he sort of takes off. He's quick first step. He takes off to try to get in the path of what he thinks Bruno Fernandez is going to run. And Bruno Fernandez is like, bro, we up 4-0. I could just try a, a shot from here one time, bro. On the volley from my that own was, half. <laughs> that was a, a remarkable shot Incredible. From, uh, from Bruno to not to not take a touch. And then also, it, it, was, it was actually interesting because it's good that he he took the shot and um uh, uh who's the uh, Kelleher who's the the, the yeah. goalkeeper for uh, Liverpool I forgot mm-hmm. his name Kelleher. um Kelleher yeah um he takes the shot and and Kelleher it, it's just just out of reach of Kelleher's hand would have been uh, a red and card. it goes over him and uh, it would have been a red card he was outside the box and he didn't not realizing where he was and so it's so much better that the goal just went in and he missed it because if he gets a hand on it. Uh, he is out of the game, and Liverpool are 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 obviously down a player. So, um, but but remarkable again. Bruno just again has these moments of just like you know he did it. Um, you know we didn't get a chance to obviously talk about the the um, the Chelsea um, United game. Um, just always the header that he scored. You know they ended up losing. Um, and the 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 cool thing about United and their their pain and their struggles is all the all the streamers i mean we had we had good vibes john on recently right i'm watching his recap of his stream and uh you know good vibes they were not good vibes they were bad vibes john (laughs) okay and then also people like mark goldbridge it, it, it's you got it you as soon as something bad happens to manchester united you gotta run to their channel. They are the to see. They are the Cavinchos <laughs> of Manchester United. They are the Cav- <laughs> okay, and they are suffering, right. bro. And uh, uh, you know, it just the the, the with, especially with that Chelsea game, which was with Cole Palmer getting those those uh, two goals in the in the final whatever eight nine minutes uh, of the game. Man, both Chelsea the, and United, you know, it, they've got some pieces for the future. You know what I mean? 
Like, you look at Chelsea, yeah. you look at United, you're like, okay, there's at least three players on each of these teams that you need to build around. But it just so happens that we're entering the everybody gets a point deduction for spending more than a penny. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I don't think y'all can yeah, afford yeah. to build the around pre- these players, bro. Premier League, y- y- y'all got to stop pocket watching, bro. Why are you looking? Why are you staring at my wallet? Okay, why are you so interested bro, in what I'm doing with my money? Bro? How about this? <laughs> I got an idea for the for the Premier League just to alleviate this. Y'all need to bring in Tam. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Tam, Tam. Let me some Tam, okay? Let me get, this Tam. Take this. Take this Tam. Don't spend it all in one place, bro. Okay, because because you you're contract you're legally not allowed to. Okay, we, you know we, we have rules. You know how no matter what you buy, even if you just go like. You go to a cashier at a CVS, and they boop, 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 and then they spin the screen around and says, do you want to leave a tip? And you're like, what did you do for this tip? <laughs> Why everybody <laughs> now all of a sudden getting tipped? These machines, bro. These the little, the little square iPads or whatever, the, the square devices. <laughs> Yo, iPads are from the world. But this is what they should do at the gates for these football clubs. You scan your ticket, and then a little iPad swings around and says, you want to leave a tip? And, <laughs> okay. And that's this is it. for profit and sustainability Yo, tips. It's, a, okay? it's a PSR adjustment fee, okay? <laughs> and that, all optional, your tips. Optional. You, <laughs> you ain't got to do it. You ain't got to do it. But it goes straight to the first team, you feel me? So if you right, want right. to see a winner out there, I suggest you but do a little 5% also, at minimum. And and these these machines they they they're little scammers. They try to trick you because a lot of them they say you know the tip is optional, but the only options they give are like fifteen, twenty, twenty five percent, and then the other button says other. So if like if you want to leave more, but they they don't tell you you have to hit other to go to zero. So you have to hit other and be like I want to leave zero. So you make you feel like a terrible person, yeah. but now you also make me go through another step. So I have to feel like a terrible person. Especially because so the lady's I like, see what- is this zero right there? And you're like, but there's a two in front of it. And I don't think you understand what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to leave you another, not 20%. <laughs> so y'all, all right. So if, if, if they can do if they can do it at a Chili's too, then they can do it at, uh, you know, at Goodison Park, right. bro. Because- right, maybe, they, maybe they need to add this at, you know, Old Trafford to help y'all out. At Stanford Bridge, <laughs> so that y'all could pay off some of these debts. Maybe get rid of Pochettino and pay him his twenty-five million or whatever you owe him for firing him early. I'll tell you this quick story. A lot story. of issues. Two in the morning, I had to pick up Donna from the hospital, my wife, at three a.m. So at two in the morning, I don't want to go to bed yet. So I go to a diner near the hospital, right? She, I'm, I just want. She works at the hospital. Yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. pick her up from an emergency, okay? Imagine I'm like, y'all pick you up in an hour. Uh, <laughs> glad you're okay, and that what? steel rod didn't uh, go through your head. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching this new dating show about footballers yeah. on Peacock. All Sorry, right? I I'm really didn't know what Ryan Babel is going to do with this bachelorette. <laughs> uh, no, it's she worked at a hospital. She had a shift. She had to change her shift for a week. So she was getting out at 3 a.m. She was telling me she's too tired to drive home and is a little worried about taking an Uber that late. So I said, bro, I got you. You know, obviously this is before the TV show. So at three, at 2 in the morning, I'm waiting. I said, yo, let me just go to the coffee shop, go to a little diner. And there's a guy and a girl sitting next to me on a first date. Good looking guy, good looking girl. Apparently they've been out for a long time. They went to go see a movie or something. And this was the first bite they were eating at 2 in the morning. They're a little drunk, so they must have gone out for drinks. They get up to pay. I'm in full view of the iPad that they're about to pay on. And my man hits the 15% button. Okay, yes. There's no this second is, day coming. Yeah, not, <laughs> not, this, a, not enough of a tip. To, no, to, you, you you're not can't. getting the tip in I'm if, you, if you. you're only putting that much of a tip. <laughs> Don't put 30. You feel me? Because <laughs> they're just going to be like... Was this guy a waiter most of his life? You don't go too high. But 15, <laughs> got it, got it. you can't hit the leftmost option, regardless of what it is. If it shows you 20, 22, 25, fam, you win for 22. And there's nothing you can do. At minimum, <laughs> at minimum, you cannot hit the left button. You got to go at least middle. Uh, Cook. Yes, these are. The, 15% okay, this on is, a date? Uh, for- nah. All right, you need date. Okay, tune into uh, uh, Alexis's dating tip show. 
I'm live on YouTube. Yeah. It'll be great. Alexis is, is uh, Alexis going. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ryan Bevel, Alexis and Ryan Bevel, right? It's the, Alexis is going to be the new Kevin Samuels, bro. He's going to let let y'all know how to find love in Except this world. Except I won't okay? be toxic. Modern dating. I won't be toxic, and I really <laughs> hope I don't have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you will. You will be alive as you yes. do it. So that'll be the that'll be the movie. You got one up on him. Um, the the uh, so obviously we just well, I just want to mention Everton deducted two more points um, uh, due to uh, uh, profit and sustainability uh, rules and yes it is very very frustrating uh, for a lot of Everton fans um, it, it's it, it's a lot of madness now right because again anytime um, any team is deduct, deducted points everybody just goes like well what about City what about Chelsea how come how are we punishing some teams and, and not others it's hard to make sense of it all this is. Um, I know Everton is appealing this again. The the original deduction was for ten points now, nah, and that got reduced to six. And you would imagine, but that was another just for appeal. that was just through twenty twenty one twenty two, the year twenty one twenty two, the years that season. Right, so right. this one uh, added twenty two twenty three. So that extra year, yes, Everton, that's when you got the extra two points. I mean, bro, you got us already. What is what's all this about? We, it's like it's it's just hard to make sense because it, you don't I I don't know where the sort of fairness is as far as applying these rules to every single uh, every single team and putting the, in these penalties right now in the same season to for Everton to be hit with penalties twice in the same season seems cruel right and and the everton fans at the fan fest made uh themselves very clear they uh, you know everton fans always show up in big numbers uh to to the fan fest they came from all over the country and while there they, they there's a photo uh that they had posted of uh holding uh the like uh the premier league corrupt signs so they were they were like I don't know, there might have been like 200 people holding up the signs and then um the uh and then the uh, the sign also said um uh premier league you don't know what you're doing uh on it as well so they <laughs> made them their opinions uh you know very very clear it's just it's frustrating the, the you know from that's like the my conversations protest, with you know <laughs> you know my my conversations with uh everton fans also i also spoke to tim howard about it um he, he Tim wasn't worried. He was like, "Look, it's it's frustrating, but I think they're going to stay up, and I think they're going to be fine." Um, I think mainly I told because you my my hot take on this is that anyone who gets deducted points should just get deducted those points after the season for the start of the next season. So similar, like when you get a red card, yeah, you may be out of the yeah. rest of that match, but you missed the next match or potentially three if you got a straight red card. You should just be deducted the points at the end of the season. So if Everton were to survive. Right with the points that they've acquired by playing those games, they start next season my, with a minus six, and that kind of now you understand sure. where you're heading, you're walking into, you understand where you're going into. Yeah. If you're Manchester City, you're going to be deducted whatever it is, accumulative to what you got deducted. Let's say thirty points. You now know you start at thirty below, so you've got to you got to make your way yeah. to zero if you're Manchester City. If you're Nottingham Forest, you got to make your way to zero. If you're Chelsea, you got to make your way to zero, as opposed to be deducted mid-season. Because think about it for Everton and Nottingham Forest that are getting points deducted. Luton has to sit back and figure out, bro, are we saved or not? You know what I mean? Are we staying up or not? Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. I'll tally the points that at Luton, the end of the season. That Luton win, that Luton win was very frustrating. Oh they, were, my God. they were tied 1-1, one, one, and then they got a late winner. And I'm like, no, of all, of all teams. You're, score you're probably I do the not want only person. Score. Everton fans are the only people rooting against Luton. Luton is like the feel-good <laughs> story of like the last seven years. <laughs> and you people are monsters. Bro, I, I don't care that their stadium is in a back in someone's backyard. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want you're like burn scoring the goals. Penny Stop down. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't care how cute it is. No, bro. Uh, is it, you know, be be quaint in the championship. Yeah. No, bro, <laughs> yeah, I don't need yeah. it. Uh, That's still be cute down there. So, you feel me? Yeah. Uh, so look, uh, uh, it's just frustrating, man. I, I, I don't. Uh, I think the, the win against uh, Burnley was obviously very, very important. But now that puts Everton in what sixteenth, sixteenth uh, place um, at the moment. They were they were above Brentford, which is 
like again, even with the points deduction, also you kind of like concerned about Brentford and how how the hell they get that low on, on the table when especially they've had pretty good seasons the last few years since they since they went up. So uh, yeah, I, I hope things change um, as far as just like getting a, a couple victories. And interestingly enough, Everton's who who does Everton play final game of the season? Alexis, who do they play? Is it Arsenal again? It is Arsenal again. <laughs> so, yeah, there could be a, Sorry. a, a situation. <laughs> there could be a situation where Everton need to win to stay up and Arsenal need to win to yeah. win the win the title. Well, I hate and, to oh. tell you an independent tribune of the 11 of Arsenal are going to deduct <laughs> you 3 points, my friend. <laughs> and there's no appealing that. <laughs> Okay, they're haters, bro. <laughs> haters. Uh, so, so we'll see what ends up happening. With All the right. Premier League, dog. <laughs> okay, they're a great organization. Yeah. They've always. I just, you know, I was at the, I was at the fan fest talking to Premier League employees, right, and they were just being polite and kind, right to my face, knowing that they were going to deduct two more points mm. from Everton Football Club. How dare Damn, they? Damn, smile okay? at your face at the bar and then fire you the next day. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Damn, I can't believe it, bro. All right, let's move on to the U.S. Women's National Team. Uh, the she-, she Believes Cup began. Obviously, there's been a lot of controversy the last couple of weeks. I don't know if y'all been paying attention, but uh, they did. Look, the U.S. did get a win. It was a little bit uh, nervy because they gave up a goal in the first minute uh, to Japan. But everything was uh, fine then- after that. <laughs> Everything was fine. Jaden Shaw scored, uh, and then Lindsey Rand got a penalty. Um, but really, not a, um, a you know, she believes Cup is is a tournament the U.S. has won the previous what five times in a row, uh-huh. something like that. Uh, I think they're going for their fifth uh, consecutive win. But the, usually very positive. Think, look, There's no controversies or anything. It's no just, controversy at all. That's what, no controversy in, in the 78th minute when Corbin Albert uh, came into the game. Uh, but now we just have to talk about it because obviously there's been a lot of uh, uh, you know issues. Well, that's when they changed um, the name uh, talk- of the competition to the She Believes What? <laughs> she believes what? <laughs> Cup. Uh, the She Believes What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the the rebrand is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was the uh, She Believes. Now it's the She Believes. What? Damn. So uh, Corbin uh, goes into the game in 78th minute, and look, the fans have spoken. There, there was a lot of booze in the stadium. People were not happy with, uh, uh, you know, I think they're just making it clear, making it known uh, what they think of, you know, the stuff that she is sharing and reposting. I, I think it's a, it's a. This has been a a, a topic where a lot of people's uh, opinions are are getting involved because it, it's it's an issue that is now uh, sort of beyond the sport and it's just talking about uh you know r- you know the rights of of a marginalized group of people and the the one thing i was annoy uh, a, a bit annoying was the it was the, the the tweet from alexi lawless which not a shock but you know we know alexi but he he is sort of i think he's sort of, you know he's mocking the the situation with he, he posted a picture of Coburn albert and you know when she came into the game and, and was pointing out how um he basically made a joke about like uh let's be let's uh be like watch out what you like or repost or something like that or whatever it is and it's just like diminishing what she was liking and what she was reposting and i mean but just, yeah but we a, understand he's he's gonna do the shock or the rage yeah posts. it's just tro- just trolling yeah. it's just a, a, a sort of lame trolling and we've said uh, this it, before it, it, he's been very nice to us he's been very forthcoming and and like actually been like super supportive okay. of the show and every time he tweets i'm like damn man <laughs> why do you have to be nice it's, to us this was so, <laughs> so much easier it's, it's it's frustrating but look it's like you know i'm i have no problem saying this to him saying this to his face or whatever it, it's a it's a frustrating um you know, just uh, again, just uh, just diminishing the actual issue and what people are. People are not just arguing what you like and repost for the sake of some like just because we don't agree with somebody's politics. It's, it's because it's, the thing you, know, you reposted is horrendous, hateful. It's yeah. it's horrendous and hateful stuff. So um, I, I I wonder again. We're going to be navigating through this because Corbin Albert could be on the Olympic team, so it could be a a, a big issue. But I I I appreciate that even. You know the like just the way I think Alexi has a, a, a and everybody has a, a right to give their opinion on the matter. 
I appreciate that the fans also they have a right to give their opinion on the matter, and that and they did the opposite of what you're uh-huh. hearing now. They they booed, uh, and that's just. Uh, uh, you know, a part of uh, yeah, that's, that's that's the consequence. If we're and gonna I'm talk not saying about that like, qu- the human aspect of it, I do feel bad for her because she's 21, and I don't think she realizes. I don't. Th- I don't know if she's she's certainly mature enough, but part of me wonders if she had no idea that this is what the reception would be. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, from the videos that people shared of her with her family, it makes me think that she grew up in a bubble where acting and talking this way or maybe even believing these things. She may very well actually believe these things and then what I'm saying doesn't really matter. But maybe she just comes from a place where she wasn't, she had no idea that the things that she believed would be so offensive to other people. Because you know how you've met people who are like, whether it's anti-trans or homophobic or something, and you ask them like, oh, so you've met trans people and you've not liked them, any of them? Oh, I've never met a trans person. So you just hate someone from far away without ever communicating with someone yeah, yeah. who is trans and and you've just developed this hatred because maybe the news channel you watch tells you to be scared of them or something of that nature where maybe maybe that's the case and i almost feel bad that this person lived in a bubble with her family which seem like they're the ones that are very on that side of of uh sort of leaning towards that side of history if you will the wrong side and maybe she hasn't had the opportunity to develop her own Personality. I'm not trying to get make a cop out for her in any way, shape, or form because you've already heard how I feel about it. But that's the only thing that I feel bad. Maybe that I know people are like, you shouldn't boo her, and I'm like, maybe that booing, in a way, will sort of shock the system and make her realize it's not a bunch of haters. A, a, right. As when a stadium full of people <laughs> boo you for your <laughs> likes on Instagram or your TikTok. You may want mm-hmm. to reconsider what the algorithm is now showing you. You know what I mean? Exactly. Just like, you know, there are a bunch of dudes in relationships and, and you know, they like a booty pic on Instagram. Right. And your wife, your wife boos you. You might, it might be time With to listen. Her fists. <laughs> <laughs> it might be time to listen and be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be liking the booty pics on Instagram right. because they're upsetting people in my own home. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you-, Where, you and I are good friends with a comedian who was on tour in another country and by himself, wife and kid were at home and hadn't realized that the iPad that the kid uses is signed into the same account as his phone. So you know that thing of like, Let's say I download the Google Maps app. It will pop up on my iPad. You know that, right? Right, 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 right. Now, yes. apparently, he was like, hey, let me find a friend in this new, in this new country. <laughs> and his wife was like, well, well, I don't think my kid downloaded Hinge on their own. So I have a feeling. And then when they reached out to the said comedian who we're friends with, hey, I know you downloaded this uh, dating app. He's like, oh, no, my phone and car got stolen yesterday. <laughs> And now had to leave his car in another country <laughs> in order to make the story real. Y- y- yeah, you have to go through all, all at all lengths uh, to, to yeah. explain this. Uh, I don't know how Grinder got on there. <laughs> yeah. There must there there must be I international like, I wa- spies I wanted to attacking make, my phone. I wanted to <laughs> add pepper to a meal, right? And they didn't have any, so I was trying to buy a pepper grinder, and I think I just clicked on the wrong one. Honey, it is a common mistake. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. Not- <laughs> yeah. And those those were photos of. I know, I know what you think those photos are, but it looks like a pepper grinder, and that's why I took those photos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, and I, I yes, I asked for the largest pepper grinder available. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. and that that was. I that's was what just looking at different shades of wood. <laughs> A pepper grinders, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, but okay. I mean, we start, look. This is this is why this show is so great because we we can do. We're talking about she believes cup, and yeah. we end on pepper grinders. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> we'll so find this a show way to get there. It. <laughs> this show has it all. All right, let's just. Uh, let's wrap up with some major league soccer, and we, we'll we'll give our woes and uh uh oh, I know. Uh, you know, I was working. Major League Soccer! We don't Let's use go. that enough. 
We don't use it enough. Um, but le- yeah, let's talk uh, about our woes and uh ohs in Major League Soccer. You know, uh, I know. Uh, you know, we were. I, I was uh, uh, drowning in in Premier League. Uh, uh, you know, fandom uh, over the weekend, and Alexis was drowning in USL fandom over the let's weekend. But we did find time to watch some. Uh, um, uh, Major League Soccer, and uh, we got, got a couple highlights in. So, um, some woes and uh ohs uh, for uh, this week. You want to start with yeah, your, I got my uh, woe. My, your my woe? woe is whoa! New England Revolution won a game. Yeah, dude. I, was, I, I was gonna. I, I, I want the part I wanted to mention was that they they won a game, but they won a game after um, Caleb Porter Promise. promised that they were gonna win a game, which was. Uh, you know, he kind of walked back the comments a little bit, but before the game, he did say he's he, like, he was when, like, I, I "When I said promise, I mean, I promise we're gonna try to win again." I don't know why <laughs> oh, you guys wrote you, it the you, other way. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you know, in general, you have to show respect to the, the the other team, the other manager. You can't be out here like we gonna win. They trash. Um, <laughs> we the, we the best. You can't do that. They shouldn't um, even show but- up. To be honest with you, because <laughs> y'all just wasting your time. But Caleb Porter did exactly that. He uh, he walked it back later. He kind of apologized uh, to to head coach uh, uh, Dean Smith uh, uh, of Charlotte FC. But that I thought was that was uh, a wild move because the, the Revolution have not been very good. Okay, no. they've been all they all they they've been they they've been throwing tea bags in, in Gillette Stadium, uh, and they don't get to do that <laughs> that often. That's but been can the we highlight talk about, of the season. Can we talk about the player of the match photo for Carlos Heel? Did you see this? I did not see it. It's him holding a very large bag of popcorn. Oh, yes. I did see this. And that I didn't understand his, what it was about. That was his award? <laughs> what is happening at New England Revolution? Because that's my uh-oh, by the way. My uh-oh is y'all uh-oh. throw inflatable boxes at the beginning of the match. Right? It was a little silly when you threw the one that bounced. So now they're clearly inflatable. Mm-hmm. And it's maybe that's gotten a little bit better. But the player of the match wins... A lot of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any of the context around this. So please, people, uh, tweet at us. Let us know what that means. Because I, I, I just scrolled past my feet and I saw the photo. And I, I was, you know, in, in. I was, you know, I, I, I've had these four a.m. call times. I don't have the time. I don't oh, have the energy. Oh, I don't have the mental strength me, to figure this 4 out. Four a.m. call times <laughs> while being next to the space in a hotel. How dare you? <laughs> Try driving for forty-five minutes at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, my uh, my woe, uh, and it, it's difficult to uh, uh, to pick, but my woe has to go to the Colorado Rapids for their comeback against um, Inter Miami at Chase Stadium. Uh, Cole Bassett with the 88 minute uh, 80th minute uh, equalizer. You know, uh, 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 Inter Miami score in the 58th and 60th uh, minute, and, and so they have the lead. Messi uh, makes his return, and uh, but Colorado held their own. And uh, I just love what you know. I, you had you were talking about them the other day uh, on the show with Kupo, and they're just looking uh, just again looks like a different team. Confidence, and we're not used to seeing that in Colorado. Uh, you know, they had a couple. Poor matches early in the season, and wondering if if Zach Steffen was the the right choice and bringing him back and all this other stuff, bringing him back down the left. But th- I think this is a good, strong, confident point, uh, you know, especially to get against uh, against against Inter Miami and Messi, and and for them to do that, uh, this young team, I thought very very impressive. So I, I, I was uh, uh, happy for them. My uh oh is also with Inter Miami because uh, I think the, the this is a team that is going to have to it, this you know the expectations of them winning everything are, are, are might be just a little too high given the injury concerns but my uh oh is actually what happened with Inter Miami in uh in CONCACAF Champions Cup because the game after Monterrey yeah, do you hear about this of the of the little little fight that he had that Messi had even though he wasn't playing in the game had a, a little fight with the with the coach of mm-hmm. Monterrey and uh, basically, the, the coach of Monterrey saying that Messi got in, got in his face. There was some audio that was picked up. I, I've only read the transcript. But I haven't heard the actual audio itself. But basically, saying that he he was like a a, a little a little devil, and that he was like possessed, screaming at him. And I'm just like, all right, I don't know 
I don't know what is going on. I like this messy, you know? <laughs> messy. I'm, I'm a little worried because the, 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 the game against Monterrey, the second leg is happening uh, this Wednesday. Uh, they are down two to one. So t- and, and Monterrey has two away goals uh, on them. So Inter Miami need to win. Um, they need to win, you know, either they, they can't just win one nil. They have to win uh, at least two nil uh, uh, to, to, to move on in the tournament. They, they had a, you know, a poor game and just poor mistakes led to um, them being down two goals when they were winning that game against Monterrey, a game that was winnable too. But I'm concerned that they are not going to, I think that if they're out of Champions Cup, I think it's gonna. I think it's embarrassing. I I, I, I completely think given, agree. E- and I also even think without their Messi. A squad is just everyone with Messi, and their B squad is everyone without Messi. And what you right. saw against Colorado <laughs> was the C squad starting this game, and the C <laughs> yeah, squad is I a look, bad, bad squad, dude. They need they need players. I mean, they, that's really it. They need. A, but I blame a, a I blame MLS because I asked the I asked the desk this. Don't you think Jorge Mas would have invested at every position a little bit more if he could have? But you're not allowed to because the 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 financial structure yeah. of MLS. So really, MLS is holding itself back at this point. It's like, dog, you got two Billy. You got two Billy from Apple. Yo, you need to get people to watch, dog. Why you got to have people we've never heard of play next to Messi? Spend, let him spend that money, bro. Yeah. I just don't yeah. get. It. I'm I mean, not look, saying completely open the gates, but you could tweak a couple of knobs here and there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, Inter Miami got like a, they did a trade. I forgot with who, but they got an international roster spot. So you could imagine another player coming in soon. But the the the, the uh, look they play against Monterrey in Monterrey. It is going to be a really really tough game, and I don't. It's not going to be a tough game for like Busquets, Alba, and, and Jordi Alba and Messi. They'll be fine. I mean, you know, you imagine yeah. the mentality. They've been, they played in really, really big games and tough games. Uh, uh, you know, obviously the altitude is going to be a factor as well in, in Monterrey. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's everyone else. Are they going to be healthy? You know, they need, they, I mean, it's, it's difficult. It's like weird to say this, but like they need uh, Kremaski back badly they just yes. don't they need players to control the game a little bit more and have some have some confidence and just not make just dumb mistakes that are giving up uh, uh you know that that are just so poorly timed that that uh uh diego um oh, where, where, where i forgot the, the, where he missed he, he missed the ball he let the, diego gomez let the ball go under his foot when he should have just cleared it and it's just such a terrible mistake at the worst worst time they could have held on been one one and gone to Monterrey with just like just a lot more confidence and it just makes it a lot more difficult. But we'll see with that with that little little scuffle that Messi got in. Um, maybe maybe an angry Messi might go into Monterrey and, and light it up. So uh, so it, it's my uh oh, but it's a little bit of we'll see we'll see what, what happens. So huh. um, all right, Major League Soccer, uh, a lot of big games uh, uh, coming up. Obviously in Champions Cup and uh, and next weekend and Champions uh, and now, League tomorrow. Um, Champions League, uh, look, too much is happening. So everybody, make sure you stick with us. Uh, tune into the Cooligans again. Shout out to all the people at the Fan Fest, uh, the fans of the show, fans of the Cooligans. A lot of people were just like, um, uh, you know, they they were happy that, to see me. A couple, I forgot the dude's name, but he was just like, "Yo, why isn't Alexis here?" And then he was like, "Man, I, I don't want to swear, but he said F Alexis, bro. He's like, we don't even need him here, bro. That's how." That's how mad he was that you weren't yeah. here. You hurt, you hurt him by not being there, okay? I'm so sorry. <laughs> so. You know I, I wish I could have been there, and I, I tried my hardest to figure out a way to do it. And there was a chance that I would be able to just go hang out. But once the Louisville City thing came through, and I'm, I couldn't be happier, I went. Shouts to no. um, Arturo uh, Dispe, who is a Cuban national team player who plays for Indy 11. Got a chance to talk to him. And I think for him, it's just normal. He's like, yeah, I'm a soccer player. But I'm like, oh, my God, you're Cuban. I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah, what was yeah. that like? You know, it's uh, <laughs> he was just like he was very gracious with his time. I saw them before the game. And uh, one of the trainers was like, you want to talk to the Cuban national team player that plays on our team? And I was like, yes. You know, uh, it, it was Bro. such a such a heartwarming moment for me. And uh, getting a chance to talk to the people. Shouts to La Bodeguita. Shouts to Please and Thank You, which is a great cookie. Shouts to everybody who uh, hooked it up. Rabbit Hole. Um, bourbon brewery or whatever distillery, I guess. Uh, some really cool people. Shouts to everyone. The what is it? Uh, Scouse's house. Uh, the Coopers. Uh, Louisville. Purple. 
people, leaders, whatever. Um, everybody. <laughs> I feel like I'm making some of this up. Shasta Elijah uh, Winder. Remember, uh, you know, Josh Winder, the kid from Louisville City, got sold to Benfica last year? Yeah. yeah. His his brother plays on. Uh, he had a bad injury. took a year to get back. He plays on the team, scored a header in front of the, you know, in front of the big lights. Uh, it was really cool, man. It was really cool. It was a good see. game. Right? I saw the highlights. It was a really good game. It goes. Dude, it was incredible. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. The stadium was going nuts. Jack Harlow was trying to avoid me like like the eclipse today if you don't have the glasses. Uh, <laughs> but it was awesome. It was absolutely, it was, you know, we go to a lot of these places. I'm like, yo, I had fun. But, like, you know, you don't have, like, the greatest time of your life, but you have fun because sometimes you have to work and the city's cool, but you're like, a lot of this stuff I could probably do at home. It's the people you meet. This time it was not just the people, but the culture that surrounds the city was so impressive to me that it was something that I, I think I just walked in with no expectations and was completely shocked. So, it was really cool. Someone told me I need to awesome. eat a hot brown, and I was like, yo, F you. And then I realized that's actually a food. But at first, I was <laughs> okay. like, you eat a hot brown. So <laughs> what did I do to you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why are you wishing that ill on me? Yeah. All right? uh, what kind of German uh, porn so- is this? And then I realized, <laughs> no. <it's- laughs> so sh- shout out to everybody uh, in, in Nashville and Louisville. Again, a lot of kindness. Always a- appreciate uh, you know when people show us cool against some love. Uh, and we're very, very grateful. So thank you again for tuning in. Make sure you follow us on all socials at soccer cooligans uh, subscribe to the youtube channel uh and shout out to everybody watching on DraftKings network uh we will be we'll be back on thursday i'll be in studio uh but i uh, i desperately need some rest and recovery as you uh i'm gonna i'm, I'm, I'm gonna be on the physio table for the next couple of days after that fan fest bro uh okay all right so we'll see you on thursday everybody thank you again for tuning in peace love you guys